Oh, ho, then I see Queen Mab had been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers, the traces of the smallest spider's web, the colors of the moonshine's watery beams, her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagoner a small gray-coated gnat, not so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid, her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out of mind, the fairy's coachmakers. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love, or courtiers' knees that dream on curtsies straight, or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on fees, or ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream, which off the angry mab with blisters plagues because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops o'er a courtier's nose, and then dreams he of smelling out a suit, and sometimes comes she with a tithe pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as a lies asleep, then dreams he of another benefice. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, ambuscatos, Spanish blades, of healths five fathom deep, and then a nun drums in his ears, at which he starts and wakes, and being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very mab that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks in foul sluttish hairs which once untangled much misfortune bodes. This is the hag when maids lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. <laughs>